Hello everybody. Well, this is my second video for the night and this is about preparedness and this is uh, stockpiling your goods for the emergency cases and there's many different emergency cases that you might need this and I do have another video where I use five gallon buckets and in each five gallon bucket is enough supplies for one month. This is a, another take on that, on things that you keep on hand, but that you get so that you do not have to go out in public in times of contagion. Uh, you stockpile your goods with basics so that if there is a lack of product in the stores, which it can very well be, um, I did a post on my Facebook about how the problem with these contagions is not necessarily the disease. You may live in a place where you're not exposed to these kinds of things, but here I'm staying out of work for a week. I know at work and in the school system there are many that um, are shutting down because uh, there's people sick, not enough people showing up for work. I can feel my temperatures going back up. I'm sorry. But, um, but if goods can't be produced because there's so many people sick and then drivers that transport our goods can't get our goods transported adequately because they're sick and people that stock the shelves can't put them in the stores because they're sick, then you start having a chain reaction. So you need a few things on hand. Now here in Middle Tennessee, in one week, we can have ice, snow, tornadoes, flooding, 20 degrees, and 70 degrees. Now, we know that because that happened last week. And uh, right now we're in the middle of flooding. So there's areas that are flooded and you can't get through and you can't get out because we have hollers and valleys and little farm areas where the roads aren't made too well. So here's a couple of things that you can keep on hand that'll keep you from having to go out into stores and uh, they're goods that can stay. You don't need milk bread eggs. Um, those things are spoilage foods. They don't keep what you need is foods that do not have to be refrigerated and are stable foods that can be put on a shelf and used when you need to. Now, I don't do bread. I do tortillas. Tortillas keep unrefrigerated out on the counter for several weeks. I mean, I've kept them out on the counter and used them just one little bag over the course of like three weeks. So if you if you have uh, a big family or just by yourself, tortillas are the way to go because you can you can cook them and make like uh, y'all gonna have to forgive me with my fever I slow thinking. Uh, but like quesadillas, that's simple enough. You, you brown it on one side, sprinkle cheese or whatever in the middle, fold it over, and then, and then you got a dipping sauce. And I'm not going to tell y'all my dipping sauce because it's a secret. But tortillas are the way to go because, uh, they keep better. Okay, now, you got your various canned goods. Now you want food that's nutritious. Uh, canned goods do have preservatives in them, but uh, you kind of sort of need that in times of crisis and stuff. So, uh, I always get the foods that you normally eat and like. If you don't like to eat a lot of variety, and there's only a few things you like, like canned chili or mac and cheese, that's what you need to get. Uh, if you just like pinto beans and cornbread that's what you need to get and that's easy enough to purchase and keep on a pantry shelf so uh, tomatoes are always a good food to keep on hand because they can add, add a variety to basics like beans soups or rice 
I said this too far away. Okay, variety of soups that you want. If you have a good broth, you can add anything into a good broth, uh, like cabbage or wild greens or turnip greens, some meat, some beans, some veggies, and you've got you a good soup. Then there's soups that are already made. Then canned meat. This is uh, white turkey, and so uh, there's chunk chicken and tuna and roast beef. There's varieties of things. Now, you'll notice right here, these have pull tabs on them. Then you don't need a can opener, but then you do if you get them like that. Okay, that's our soups and stuff. Okay, you need to have on hand your medicines. Now, if you've got prescription medicines, you need to have about a month's supply or more, if you can get it, on hand so that you don't have to go out. You know, when you go to the pharmacy, guess who you're standing next to? Sick people. Well, you don't want to go to the pharmacy and stand next to sick people during an outbreak. So go on and stockpile on your medicines. And always have your Tylenol and ibuprofen on hand. And that is our fever reducers. And that is so that the f that you can manage your fever from getting too high. Okay, now another staple good. If you want to drink sodas and you're still drinking sodas, well, you're good as dead anyway. That stuff is toxic and it'll kill you. But you can keep tea and coffee on hand. Now my prep coffee is brick coffee. It's in those uh, airtight packages it's, that looks like the shape of a brick. I have a lot of that. I use Cafe Bustello and that is what I keep on hand as part of my preparedness and then I also have other coffees uh, to mix together with that. Now Louisiana tea um, now, if you purchase tea in the South, everybody's got their brand preference, but Milo's is the big winner here. But it's already prepared, and it'll go bad. It'll spoil in the refrigerator if you don't drink it fast enough. If you don't drink it fast enough, you're not Southern anyway. But uh, I keep Louisiana tea in these big family-sized tea bags, and then I make them as I need them. Now, there's plenty of herb teas out there and variety teas. Keep those on hand because all you need is water and something to brew it. And you can do that over campfire if you need to. Okay. Now, I die salt. I have been watching uh, a lot of historical uh, programming on YouTube with Ruth Gibson in them and those are the tales from the Green Valley and Tudor Monastery and Edwardian Farm and I do know this because I've seen my mama do it but you take salt and you scrub surfaces and that kills bacteria and disease right there so you you always need uh, iodized salt to uh, you can use it as a cleanser and you can use it as a preservative for food preservation. And it's a flavoring. Um, so uh, it's a disinfectant. So keep that on hand. Also, um, if, if you have places where you're prone to ice, like I am, um, the fine particulate matter of the table salt will melt ice faster than that chemical stuff that you buy in the store and it's not as damaging on your landscape. Now these little things are the staple of, of my uh, preparedness and that is um, in my five gallon buckets because they don't take up space, they're lightweight and all you gotta do is add water. So these little rice packs, these noodle packs, these are things that are good so that I want to tell y'all, I had to go get my nebulizer uh, prescriptions this morning. And, and just going and having to get out was just so hard. So, um, keeping these little things on hand, I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to fix a big meal or anything like that. I can, I can just add some water in a pot and 
some salt and pepper and and I've got a little meal to to stay to keep me going okay you always need your toilet paper now I, I don't know why people don't know these things but uh, I'm here to share what I know but what you do is you figure out how much of your basics that you use in one week and then you multiply it times four and that's how much you need for a month and then you multiply it by the months when you're trying to prepare so I keep about two months of toilet paper on hand and you know that you're always going to need it well, why not stop pilot okay now if you have pets you make sure you've got your pet supplies uh, I could not pick up extra litter today. I simply could not have carried it into the house. And what I'm going to end up doing is ordering that um, through the pickup service at Walmart. And then I'll just pick it, uh, pick it up there. They'll put it in my car for me. And then I'll, I'll wait to do that when I feel a little bit better. But I actually do have enough litter for Yoda for a week or two. Now... Here's a, here's a little something to think about to keep on hand for treats. Sometimes when you're sick and you don't feel good or there's an outbreak or ice storms or whatever, you need a little treat to treat yourself. So what I do is it's called mug cake or mini cake. There's many different little ways to go by. Um... You buy your cake mix, any regular cake mix. And you have to have one box of angel food cake mix. And I actually have several different kinds of cake mixes. And I don't do this often, but every now and then I'm just like, I just need something to make me feel like I'm indulging. So, you take one tablespoon of your angel food cake two tablespoons of whatever cake mix you have and put it in a small little container which is usually a mug then you take three tablespoons of water and add to that and stir it up real good and then microwave it for a minute and you have cake and it's just one little single serving and it's a little treat that you can do and this is something you can do for your family um, like I said, if you're shut in because of storms or sickness or whatever, this is a little something that you can do. And I'll also mix them. Uh, I have red velvet and dark chocolate and German chocolate and all kinds. Well, I'll take one tablespoon of, of dark chocolate and one tablespoon of red velvet mixed up together with the angel food. And I have a, I have a different kind of little cake. You can also add nuts, uh, berries. Uh, dried fruits to it and makes a little n another little nice treat so um, this is just preparedness for you to know to get yourself together there's no excuse for not having or for exposing yourself to danger or exposing others uh, in this time, yeah, you like to drive through the drive through Well, for every time you touch a surface that somebody else has touched, you're increasing your risk of having something that's very deadly. Flu does still kill thousands of people every year, and this coronavirus looks like it's going to wipe out a lot of people. So, um, I'm bored. I'm cranky. Yoda gets mad at me because I wake him up because my coughing is so bad. And I know y'all have probably seen him walking around in the background and stuff. He's right here at my feet right now. But I hope y'all are doing well. And if you do have sickness, I'll pray for you all right now. God, please watch over all these good people. And thank you so much for all your many blessings. And thank you for Heavenly Father, for all that you have ever done for me, I am so genuinely blessed. And I ask you to watch over all these people, and I ask things, these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior. And 
Amen. And good night to everybody out there. I'm going to take a breathing treatment and go to bed. God bless you all. Good night.